So here's what I want to do. It's Rosh Chodesh Elul, and this is such an auspicious time that I want to share with you my guide of what I'm doing on my own internal work. And then hopefully it would be an inspiration or a guide of what all of us can do as we prepare ourselves for this upcoming new year. And so it's just like, it's the essence of Elul. It's the heart of this time. It's the essence of Tshuva. So this is a practical spiritual guide for building the life that we want for this coming year. That's what I'm doing. That's the purpose of this month. Like there's a reason why um, secular New Year's resolutions, they kind of like, this like the, the stigma is that they just, I wanted to do this, but it didn't really come to pass because the resolution, it's not just like a one day thing before New Year's. We have 30 days of El, we have 10 days until Yom Kippur. There's like a 40 day process that if we do it right, those resolutions will stick. We will transform who we are. And if we translate Teshuvah as realigning oneself um, to get realigned, there are three things we need to work on getting clarity on during this month. And you can write these three things down because if we have clarity on them, it just, it, it just, it, everything is about clarity. And that's why taking it from our thoughts to Dibur, to writing it down is key. And so the first question is who we want to be. Question number one, who we want to be. Question number two, what we want in our life. Question number three, how do we want to live? So there's three fundamental questions, and these three questions represent the first three pages of every journal that I have. So the first one, what we do in Elu, is we're going to find the mantras for this upcoming year. What are the mantras? Who we are? Who do we want to be? Now, for me, I've had these five in my top five for so many years now, I don't even remember them anymore. Can we just put them up on the screen? This was a secret that was revealed in the 1800s that was actually taught to me by Rav Shlomo Katz. And the letters of the beginning of each one of these Hebrew verses, if you see it, actually spells the word teshuva. Tamim tiyei mashem Elohecha, shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid, vehapta l'reacha kamocha bechol drachecha de'ehu, hatsnei alechet im Elohecha. These Five verses to me are the heart of what it is to be a believer in this world. And a book, a beautiful book, was just written based on these five verses, a book about teshuva. And if you want to order a book for the month of Elul, I highly recommend this book. It came out last year. It was written by Rabbi Judah Michelle. The book is called Baderech, Along the Path of Teshuva. And the whole book is actually... Um, I just put it now in the chat so you can see uh, how it's written, the title, the author. You can order it on Amazon. And um, what I want to do now really quickly is to just go through these five verses because I go through these verses every time I open up my journal. And this year I've added a few new ones. And each time, you know, you want to add a few verses that are really going to be with you for this upcoming year. Who do we want to be? How, what, what life lessons do we not want to forget this year? So the first one that we mentioned, we could put it up on the screen. Tamim tiyei mashem elohecha. Be tamim, be wholehearted, pure, innocent, simple with Hashem, your God. Now, the word tamim, it's a difficult word to translate. That's why I had to put so many words in parentheses there. But to me, it really boils down to integrity, just to be wholehearted, to be honest. If you're not honest, you don't have integrity, then you're disintegrated. You're disintegrated. Here, it's just to be whole, to be simple, to be pure. No spin, don't lie, don't try to manipulate, just I keep things simple. It's just a daily reminder to keep things pure, keep my speech precise, just to be tamim, to be pure with God, to be in, just to have integrity. The next one, Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid, that's from Psalm 16, verse 8. I have placed Hashem before me always, just to try to keep a God consciousness throughout my day. It's like a beautiful goal to always orient myself toward the ultimate good, to act with moral clarity and courage when I needed to, when I want to walk, walk in the light, always. Just shiviti Hashem l'negdi tamid. Also, the word shiviti comes from the word shaveh, which means equal. And that's when something bad happens, something good happens, something scary happens. It should all be shaveh. It's all from one source. It's for all from God. Everything that happens, I should see it in the same light 
everything should be recognized immediately as a communication, as a guidance, as a correct, I'm being corrected, I'm being guided. The hard times, the good times, it's all equal. It's all shave. Everything is in the eyes of shiviti l'ashem v'negdi tamid. And now the third verse, which is, there's five. The one in the middle is ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. So there's two at the top that are about our relationship with Hashem, two on the bottom that are about our relationship with Hashem, and then there's the heart of it all, to love your fellow as yourself. That's the litmus test. That's what this world is really all about. I mean, it's the heart of it all. It's easy to love God. It's hard to love man. And Hashem tells us the easiest way the best way, the greatest way to love God is to love your neighbor, love your fellow man, to express as much love between our fellow human beings as we can. That is the greatest of all commands. It should be the 11th commandment. It's the heart of teshuva. It's not just about our relationship with ourselves or our relationship with God. It's about our relationship with God. And then next one, the whole drachecha de'ehu v'hu yasher or chatecha, and all of your ways know him and he will straighten your path. This is the verse about living a guided life, wherever you go, wherever you are, search for him, search for the way that you can be a Kiddush Hashem, you can sanctify his name in the world. Um, we're put in so many circumstances in life. Every day, there's multiple circumstances. Know him in every one of those ways. In every way, what's the win in this situation? What's really the way to shine our light in the world? How do we express emunah right now? And Rabbi Nachman's first teaching that he writes in Likutei Moran is every Israelite needs to search out the godliness, the godly mind within everything so that everything will light his way and draw him closer to God. That's the heart. And then the last one, Hatznea Lechet Im Elohecha, Micah chapter 6, verse 8, walk humbly with God. It's all from him, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. And as we walk, just to walk in service that's not really about us, Walk humbly with God. It's about his kingdom. It's about other people. Just to keep the humility as like the kind of one of the ultimate virtues. And so those are the mantras of who we are. So the work of this month, find the verses that you want to carry with you in this time as we start the new year that will shape who we are. And um, the first page of my journal, those mantras are always there. Every time I look up, every time I open my journal, it's just a constant reminder, a meditation of who I want to be. Those are the verses that I want to express in my life. And Abraham Joshua Heschel says in one of his last speeches to his students, remember, above all else, build your life as though it were a work of art. So who we want to be, the next one is what we want in our lives. And so that's the ingredients what are the critical ingredients that we want to make sure that we have in our life? We look at our week. Did we put all of these ingredients into our life? So Torah, these are mine. Torah, prayer, my diet, my fitness, my health, my exercise, my marriage, my children, my original family, the one that are closest to me, my brothers and my parents, my home, my writing, my journaling, my, my taking time to have cheshbon nefesh, to reflect on my life and where I'm going and how I'm doing. Eretz Yisrael, nature, animals. Am I, am I touching like God's creation? Am I having time? I need those ingredients in my life. What am I doing to be creative? What am I creating in the world? Chesed, my community. What am I in service of? The kindness, what am I doing? And then my last and most important ingredient is my mornings. Am I waking up early and having that time to really put those ingredients in? That's my key. So everyone needs to say, what do we want in our life? What are the ingredients of your life that make your life beautiful, that make your life worth living, that make your life special to you? You have to then articulate what are the ingredients. And then as we build our life into Elul, saying, you know what? Here's my life. You know what? I love being out in nature. God created nature. Man created city. One step closer to nature is one step closer to God. I want on Fridays, I want to go take out a walk on the round the river. I want to be out in nature. I want to spend time and build my life that I have the ingredients that make my life beautiful, that make my life a work of art. If you want to build a, you know, you want to uh, bake a cake, you need the ingredients to put into the cake to make it delicious. Same thing about our life. So who we want to be and what we want in our life. That's the second question. And then the third and last question is, how do we want to be in this world? How do we want to live? And for that, we have the soul map. And those mantras that remind us who we want to be, the ingredients, what we want in our life, how we want to be in the world. 
We have the seven spirit, the seven virtues, the godly attributes in this world, how we can express them in the world. And those seven virtues for me, love and compassion, that's chesed, discipline and self-sacrifice, that's gevura, emet, is truth, courage and victory is netzach, hod is gratitude, yesod is self-mastery, equanimity, nothing should be able to shake us. And the last one, malchut, is humility. And so a New Year's resolution, that 40 days, we think to ourselves, who do we want to be in the world? What ingredients do we want in our life? And how do we want to be in the world? If we can nail those three questions and really get clarity as we enter into the new year, it is literally like a, an arrow being shot. We're using the Torah to pull out our best life and to shoot it in a new direction, really regaining control and steering our life in the most beautiful direction possible, like a God-driven life, a godly life. And so we should all be blessed we should all be blessed to really express our soul in the world this year and really pull out all of the hidden treasures that are within us and to be lights to everyone around us. Hi, my name is Jeremy Gimpel. A lot of people want to know exactly what the Land of Israel Fellowship is and what members receive when they join. So let me explain. The Land of Israel Fellowship is a global online community with hundreds of members from over 40 countries around the world. Their live sessions and gatherings that create a direct personal connection to the land of Israel and to lovers of Israel from around the world. There's no online gathering that I'm familiar with that is connected to the land of Israel that unites and brings together such a diverse group of people, backgrounds and nationalities. It feels like prophecy. It feels like something we need in these times, like a window in to a better future on the horizon. There's a divine unity we experience every week in our fellowship broadcast. We heard these amazing teachings from an authentic Hebrew and Israel perspective and our jaws drop. Not only because they ring so true and are such a blessing, because they are so consistent with what we believe. These Sunday morning gatherings are nothing less than a house of prayer for all nations. Cindy Lowe, the United States of America. The Land of Israel Fellowship is an amazing resource for learning Torah, the Bible, and the prophets unfiltered and uncensored directly from the land of Israel. We've been studying Torah for almost 20 years, but we feel we are stepping into it more than ever and seeing new depth and dimensions to scripture. We're encouraged more and more every week. Callan Ardell, USA. Members receive access to all the archives in the library of teachings on every portion of the Torah, the biblical feast, Hebrew prayer, prophecy, sessions on the ancient wisdom of the prophets of Israel, to help us navigate through these turbulent times. These sessions are so rich. I re-listen to each, and truly each session is the best one yet. Tehillah is a tremendous asset and the teachings Ari shares are so rich. I've read the Bible so many times and I've known the things you are teaching. The Hebrew understanding is what Christians have missed for century. Sister Georgian from Germany. The Land of Israel Fellowship is truly unique because it's built upon personal relationships with the teachers of the fellowship, myself, Rabbi Arya Bramwitz in Tehillah Gimpel. Every member has direct access to the staff 24-6 via email or direct WhatsApp to ask questions, to comment, to connect directly to all the teachers. And over the last years, we've connected to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. So if you want to find out more and join the Land of Israel Fellowship, you can click on the link below. And if you want to try it out for just a month, you can email fellowship at thelandofisrael.com and we'll hook you up. I hope to see you. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.